Beloved in Christ, sometimes we are overwhelmed with problems of suffering and pain in the world. The book of Job from which our first reading of today was taken from seeks to address the question of suffering, the hard tax man has to face. Why are there many sufferings? Why are there so many calamities, injustice, wars, diseases, disappointments, and exploitations in our world? Why should good and innocent people also suffer? Why should the wicked experience success? Job could not hide his discomfort about his suffering and pain. In spite of his many pain and sufferings, he did not lose his faith in the saving power and providence of God. My dear brother and my dear sister, the case of Job reminds us of our own daily struggles with both physical and spiritual problems like sickness, hardships, rejection, betrayal by even our own friends and family members, among others. Irrespective of our inability to understand the sufferings of our life, there is always someone we can turn to for a solution. That is our God. There is always a word of consolation, hope, from the word of God to aid us on. The power of the word of God is our strength. The word of God transforms our troubled hearts, gives a new meaning to life, impacts joy and deep peace, as well as faith in the midst of our suffering. The gospel reading of today, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, tells us about how Jesus' first encounter with human suffering and misery when he encountered Peter's mother-in-law and other people suffering from all kinds of infirmities and those tormented by demons, but he healed and delivered them all. The gospel, therefore, draws our attention to the power and ability of God to heal, to deliver us through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Without the intervention of God, my dear brother and sister, in our lives, in our life situation, we will be helpless and be in perpetual slavery to pain and suffering. But Jesus came so that we will have life, as scripture says, I came so that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10 verse 10. Ours is to approach him with faith. Dear friends, there is no one who encountered Jesus with faith that he did not heal, that he did not deliver or save. This is important. If Jesus must heal us, we too must have faith in him. If Jesus must deliver us and save us, we too must have faith in him. If the good news must liberate us, we must have faith in the power of the word of God and trust and have faith in Jesus. We should therefore be in constant union with Christ, no matter how busy we are. It is only when we connect to Jesus Christ in prayer that we will find peace in this troubled world. It is only when we will link up with Jesus in prayer that we will find inspiration and inexhaustible strength to continue the tax he has entrusted to us in this life. Jesus tells us, Come to me, all who labor and are overburdened, and I will give you rest. Matthew 11, verse 28. We come to Jesus and offload our burdens through prayer. We come to Jesus to be strengthened through prayer. We need prayer even in our determination to conform to the will of God. We are zealous about it. We will overcome. We will be able to combat the evil one and do what is good in the sight of the Lord all the time. Dear beloved, dearly beloved in Christ, 
In the midst of misery, Job turned to God for breakthrough, as we are told in the first reading. In the midst of sickness, pain, and suffering from the grip of the evil one, those who turned to Jesus received healing and deliverance. Let us also turn to Christ in every situation of life. Let us keep trusting in Him in our daily struggles with problems of life, and we will find answers to our worries, for He has come so that we will have life and have it to the full. Beloved in Christ, however, my dear friends, when we have encountered Jesus Christ and have been helped, let us also turn to help and serve others as Peter's mother-in-law did in the gospel. Paul, in the second reading, throughout his life, encountered Jesus and his life was transformed. His faith was strengthened and be coming out of it, he felt the obligation to preach the good news to all that others may also encounter Christ and be set free, as we learn from the second reading. Let us, therefore, learn to extend unto others the same help we receive from the Lord. We should therefore never be tired of doing good because God is also good to us all the time. May God bless and keep us all in his care as we are determined to do his will all the time. Amen. I invite you to share my homily with others and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any worries, if you have any question for clarification, don't hesitate to send email through the email address that you see on your screen. Stay blessed and have a wonderful week.